Domnule secretar general. General secretary, deputy general secretary, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome the visit to Romania of the general secretary of NATO, Jens Stoltenberg, in this crucial moment for Euro-Atlantic security. I bid him welcome once again, Jens. During the last months, we have witnessed a uh, grave deterioration of the security situation in the proximity of the Ukraine and the, the area of the Black Sea in the vicinity of the eastern flank of the Alliance. As I have said, the current crisis is not only regional, not only limited to the Ukraine, to the Black Sea, or to the European security. This crisis impacts the security of the entire Euro-Atlantic space. Your visit, General Secretary, takes place at the point when in Romania the 1,000 military, uh, American militaries from the striker battalion have just arrived, I bid them on my behalf and on behalf of the Romanian people welcome to our country. These two events are a clear proof for the support granted by NATO and by the United States of America to the security of Romania and of its citizens in the current context defined by tension and lack of stability. I thank once again President Biden for this very clear proof of solidarity on behalf of the United States as main ally and main strategic partner of Romania in the context of the efforts to consolidate the discouraging and defense posture on the eastern flank of NATO. I thank you too, General Secretary, for your constant involvement in these efforts and for the support you have granted to this essential objective. We are doubtlessly going through the heaviest crisis after the fall of the Iron Curtain. It is obvious that uh, Russia has an intimidation strategy and tendencies that are not to be accepted to come back to the force policy and to the fight against the international, the current international order, including the parameter of the European architecture of security built after the Cold War. In this context, we had an in-depth discussion with the General Secretary concerning these developments and the measures that NATO and the Allies need to take in order to protect and maintain Euro-Atlantic security. They have to be robust, firm and solidary based on unity, cohesion and allied solidarity. Romania as a member of NATO and strategic partner of the United States, benefits of all the security guarantees it needs. And these guarantees are based on the intensified commitment of NATO and of some allies as the United States and France as a response to the security deficit on the southern part of the eastern flank. This involvement and this manifest solidarity bring consistency and an enhanced credibility to the collective allied effort to enhance our security of all. As you say and as you know, I repeatedly insisted from the very beginning of my first mandate when it comes to NATO and in the dialogue of our allies for a more consistent presence of NATO of the United States and of other allies in the Black Sea region. Granting a consolidated posture to discourage and to defend in a unitary and coherent manner on the entire eastern flank from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea contributes to regional stability, but also to the security of the alliance in its whole and of all citizens of the Allied States. As said before, 
regardless of current evolutions in the region, NATO has to maintain a high level of its capacity of discouraging and defending that allows it to efficiently fulfill its objectives, which are strictly defensive, the objectives for which the alliance was created. Besides these measures, a stronger presence of the alliance will support the necessity to move on with the political and diplomatic dialogue with Russia in order to find solution that allow us to desescalate the situation without compromising the main principles of the alliance and of international law. So, it is very clearly stated that the current crisis is not a result of possible structural problems of the current security architecture, but because of the violation of some of its main provisions. Romania was and still is very involved from a diplomatic perspective in adopting decisions at allied level and at European level concerning the current crisis depending on our geographic position and the strategic interest our country has in the stability of the eastern neighborhood of NATO and of the European Union. Once again, I state with this occasion the support of Romania for the territorial integrity, sovereignty and independence of the Republic of Moldova, of Georgia and of the Ukraine and for the right of these states to build a future based on their own European and Euro-Atlantic aspirations. Besides the strong solidarity message coming from NATO through the presence of uh, General Secretary in Romania, the visit was a good opportunity to discuss a series of perspectives and strategic objectives for this year. We had an exchange of opinion on uh, the preparation of the NATO summit in Madrid in June. We have also presented the vision and the priorities of Romania concerning the new strategic concept and the adjustment project of the alliance. In this extremely complicated period, the transatlantic unity is crucial and the partnership between NATO and the European Union is more important than ever. From our perspective, Romania is committed to maintain its commitments when it comes to allocating 2% of the GDP in order to continue modernizing military capacities. We will focus from now on on growing the operational capacity of all military structures through our national effort and in a multinational context. An enhancement of resilience at the level of military structures and of public institution and of society as a whole represents an important and one of the main directions of action which is subsumed to the implementation of the national defense strategy of our country. General Secretary, thank you again for coming to Romania and we're glad you made it today with your team to come to Romania here at Mihai Kogelnichanu at a military base. You have the floor, Jens. President uh, Johannes, uh, dear Klaus, uh, thank you so much for receiving me and my team here uh, today, and thank you for your, your very warm uh, welcome. It's a pleasure to be back in Romania, a strong and committed NATO ally. And also many thanks for your personal commitment to our transatlantic alliance and for our close cooperation over so many years. Thank you also for your significant contributions to our transatlantic alliance, including hosting this important airbase. Romania does not stand alone. Fighter jets uh, from Germany and Italy are here uh, to, sorry, to protect and to defend all allies and to help to keep your skies safe. 
And today, Spanish jets uh, will arrive in Bulgaria to reinforce NATO's air policing mission there. As we speak, 1,000 US troops are deploying to this base, bringing the total number of US service members to almost 2,000 at this base. This is a powerful demonstration of transatlantic unity and North America's ironclad commitment to the defense of Europe. And from here in the Black Sea region, all the way to the Baltic, allies are stepping up to reinforce NATO's presence at this critical time with more troops, more capabilities, and greater readiness. And next week, NATO defense ministers will meet uh, and uh, discuss how we can uh, further strengthen our presence in the eastern part of the alliance, including with new battle groups. And I welcome France's uh, offer to lead a NATO battle group here in Romania. NATO is a defensive alliance. Our task is to preserve peace. We do that today by making sure that there is no room for misunderstanding or miscalculation about our commitment and readiness to protect Romania and all of the NATO allies. This is even more important uh, in light of the Russia's unjustified military buildup in and around Ukraine, including in the Black Sea region. The Black Sea is a region of vital strategic importance to NATO. Three NATO allies are littoral states, as are our close partners, Ukraine and Georgia. So security in this region is of utmost importance to NATO. We are committed to dialogue uh, and to find a political solution. I have reiterated my invitation to Russia to meet again in the NATO-Russia Council as soon as possible to address the crucial uh, issues for European security, including uh, risk reduction, transparency, and arms control. But NATO will not compromise on core principles, the right for each nation to choose its own path and our ability to protect and defend all allies. There will never be first class and second class members of NATO. There are only NATO allies, united as one. So, Mr. President, let me once again thank you for hosting me and for your strong commitment to our alliance. This is uh, especially important as we face a crucial time for European security. So, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Q&A sessions, please introduce yourself uh, and tell us who you want to ask. I'm going to go down a little bit because I'm as tall as the Secretary General. First of all, General, thank you very much for, uh, for taking uh, my questions. First of all, to the Secretary General, you've spoken in the past couple of days about how dangerous the situation still is with Russia right now. How big do you see the risk of a further Russian invasion uh, in Ukraine? And then secondly, um, how important is the deployment, thank you, uh, how important is the deployment especially of U.S. forces here to show America's commitment to NATO's eastern flank? And to, uh, to the President, uh, the same question also, how important is it for you to have additional American forces here on your base, in your country? And then second of all, there's very few countries actually that have become more important in the NATO alliance in such a short time as Romania has. How do you uh, want to further integrating into the alliance and also continuously upgrading your military capabilities? There is a real risk, because what we see now is that the military buildup in and around Ukraine continues. So there is a real risk for a, a new armed conflict in Europe. The number of Russian troops are going up, uh, and uh, the warning time is going down. Uh, at the same time, we don't have any certainty, and therefore we continue to uh, uh, 
reach out to Russia uh, to call on them to de-escalate and to engage in good faith in political dialogue with NATO and the NATO allies. There is a risk for a full-fledged invasion, but there's also a risk for other types of aggressive actions, including attempts to topple the government in Kiev, uh, hybrid cyber attacks, and many other types of uh, Russian uh, aggression. There's no certainty, but what we know is that the military buildup continues. We have seen the threatening rhetoric from the Russian side, and we know that there are many in Russian intelligence officers operating inside Ukraine. And then, of course, we have the track record of uh, Russia using force against Ukraine before. So the combination of military buildup, threatening rhetoric, and a track record of using force against neighbors, of course, that's the reason uh, for uh, being uh, seriously concerned and uh, uh, being vigilant and ready also to uh, react if uh, they once again uh, use force against uh, uh, Ukraine. That's exactly why the presence of NATO troops here in Romania is so important, because a sense, that sends an uh, unwavering uh, and ironclad uh, message of uh, alliance unity, that we are uh, here together, that we stand united. And of course, um, the presence of US troops uh, at this base in Romania sends a very strong message of US North American commitment to European security. So therefore, it was great to meet the US troops today from the striker brigade uh, to talk to them. And uh, they are professional, they are committed. And I'm extremely grateful for the service of all the U.S. Uh, servicemen here in Romania. Thank you for your question. I think the fact that we have all these men and women you see here today uh, in the Mihai Kogani channel base in Romania is extremely important. It's extremely important for Romania but as I said before, it is extremely important for the entire alliance. Because one of the strategic objectives of the alliance is to have a strong eastern flank. Uh, a strong eastern flank building up a strong defense and a strong deterrence. This, of course, needs a strong entire eastern flank and it is quite obvious that we had uh, a need to have more troops on this part of the eastern flank especially with all the evolutions in the black sea area so having these troops these days arriving here in romania is extremely important for our security for europe's security but I be strongly believe it is important for the entire Euro-Atlantic security. You mentioned the role of Romania, and I appreciate this, because fact is, Romania underwent a significant transformation over the last years if it comes to its stance in the alliance and the way we see the Euro-Atlantic security the way we act in NATO, and the way we want to evolve. When Romania became a member of NATO, it had a difficult economic situation. The armed forces have not been in a super condition. And so Romania entered NATO to get security, to receive security. We changed this uh, ever since I uh, came to office, uh, I started the transformation. Actually, one of the first uh, actions uh, I had when I started was to gather all the political parties, convince them to allocate a significant part of our GDP, 2% of our GDP, for at least 10 years to modernize our armed forces and to increase the level of security for Romanians and to step up inside the alliance. This is what we did. And uh, 
we are continuing this way. So Romania transformed not only through modernizing its armed forces, its approaches, but we managed through a, an excellent collaboration with the other allies, with the Secretary General, with Jens together, uh, to transform our status from receiving security into an ally who is providing regional security. And this is what we do. We believe that Romania is an important ally, and we believe that we play an important role on this side of Europe. But we're not going to stop here. We are continuing. And so I believe that the role of Romania will increase over the next years, too. Thank you. Cristina Cilacu, Digi24, Domnule Secretar General Stoltenberg, uh, Mr. Stoltenberg, uh, yesterday during a press conference you had a discussion with the British Prime Minister on the troops in the Baltic states in Poland and you said that there is an intent the, for the area of the Black Sea. Will this intent become a reality? Can we expect a decision at the Madrid summit? President Johannes, a question uh, to continue what you have said until now. How much do we think, because it's part of security, uh, how much do we think about infrastructure? We need infrastructure for the NATO troops to move, as we see today. Will Romania have further investments in this area of infrastructure as well? Thank you. I think we need to distinguish between uh, the immediate need to increase our presence in the eastern part of the alliance. And uh, we have seen that uh, NATO allies, the United States, the United Kingdom, uh, and other allies uh, have stepped up. And, uh, and deployed more forces to the eastern part. We have seen Italian troops here today, and, and, uh, and many other countries are, are, are doing the same. Um, that, uh, that has already taken place, and we continue to reinforce uh, our eastern flank with more ships, with more uh, uh, planes, with more uh, troops. Uh, and we are also ready to quickly reinforce if needed. Uh, we have increased the readiness of the NATO response force, and we can deploy more forces on short notice if needed. So that is what we have done uh, already. Uh, deployed more troops and increased readiness so we can reinforce uh, quickly. For instance, the United States has announced that they have allocated, assigned 8,500 8, uh, 8, extra troops to the NATO response force so they can be easily and quickly uh, deployed. Then we are uh, on top of that. We are also uh, assessing whether we should um, adjust our more longer-term presence in the eastern part of the lines. And that includes a battle group uh, in Romania, but also uh, perhaps battle groups in other parts of the uh, southeast of the alliance. This will be discussed uh, and addressed at the upcoming NATO Defense Ministerial meeting next week. And I expect that ministers will agree to further uh, start the planning uh, and to address uh, the scale and the scope and the details about how to deploy a battle group, what kind of battle group. And then I expect that the final decision will be taken uh, during the, uh, the, the spring. Uh, so uh, yes, I, we have already increased our presence. Uh, we see it here today, um, more than 2,000 US troops, Italian, German, and others. Um, uh, we have seen the willingness of France, uh, so uh, I think that on top of the more urgent and current uh, increases, uh, there will also be long-term changes, including a battle group in, uh, in Romania. The infrastructure is vital, it's crucial. If we want, to have regional and Euro-Atlantic security. Mobility is very important. It is obvious that we need performant infrastructure in order to allow the entire logistics 
accompanying forces being developed. We need infrastructure to move the personnel easily from one part to another. We need infrastructure, military infrastructure, and we are working on it since 2015. But it is very interesting, and today I had the opportunity, I have uh, discussed uh, it with the General Secretary, the works of military infrastructure which did not take place uh, under the banner of NATO lately. And we think that it is very important in order to enhance the efficiency of the entire military mechanism of the alliance to invest in infrastructure. If you think about more concrete things, there are specific types of infrastructure that uh, support logistics, uh, for instance, fueling or others which are crucial for normal functioning. If we are speaking about cybersecurity, it is obvious that we need a very serious investment in this type of infrastructure. Everywhere we need on one hand, to invest in the development of our military capacities, but on the other hand, in infrastructure. Romania has understood this. We have a very important plan to develop infrastructure through the National Recovery and Resilience Plan, but also through usual European funds and from the national household. The government is working on all these aspects, and I'm sure that the progress will be seen shortly. Uh, Isabel Coles from the Wall Street Journal. Um, could you update us on French plans uh, to send reinforcements and are any other um, and any and plans by other NATO members to do the same um, oh and how long uh, do you expect these reinforcements to, to, to be here again I think we need to distinguish between two things we have already increased our presence in the eastern part of the alliance with thousands of troops uh, United States United Kingdom uh, all their allies have uh, deployed uh, the Netherlands, uh, Denmark, uh, Spain has provided ships and, uh, and planes, and, and, and further deployments are actually going on as we speak with the uh, incoming uh, US uh, 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 striker uh, uh, units, which will deploy here within uh, days. So this is something which has taken place uh, and, 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 uh, and is an ongoing strengthening of, uh, of the um, NATO presence in the eastern part of the alliance. Then we have also uh, increased the readiness of the NATO response force. Uh, but these troops are in their home bases in the United States, in, in, uh, in other uh, European countries, in, in France, in, in Germany, and so on. But they can be quickly deployed anywhere uh, in the alliance or to anywhere in the alliance if needed, if there is a uh, need to, uh, to, to have forces uh, quickly deployed somewhere um, on NATO territory. Then, on top of that, we are considering more longer-term adjustments in our posture. And that includes establishing battle groups in uh, the southeast of the alliance, meaning Romania, but also other uh, countries uh, around the Black Sea region. France has offered that they can lead the battle group in Romania. We welcome that offer. It's of great importance. Uh, but that will take some more time to make the final decisions and, of course, to deploy the forces. Uh, so, uh, so far it's only France that has specifically offered to lead one specific battle group, but many other allies have indicated willingness to either to be part of the French battle group in Romania or to be part of a battle group uh, in another NATO allied country. Uh, we have all the battle groups in the Baltic region, uh, in the three Baltic countries and, uh, and Poland, uh, and they have proven very uh, successful because uh, they integrate with the national forces of these countries, and they send a very strong message of a multinational commitment to uh, NATO. Because by having a multinational force, um, 
in these countries, uh, we send a very clear message that an attack on one ally will trigger the response from the whole alliance. And that's the, that's the, that's the purpose of NATO, is to preserve peace, uh, prevent an attack, because it's obvious that an attack on one ally will trigger the response from all allies. Uh, and, and therefore, yes, we are working on battle groups also in this region. But in the meantime, we have increased our presence, uh, 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 regardless of whether uh, or what kind of decisions that we make la later on on battle groups. The last question goes to Radu Tudor. Radu Tudor, uh, I have a question for both Secretary General and Romanian President. What is your message to the Romanian people that feels threatened by several mention of Russian Federation that Romania is a threat to Russia based on military presence of NATO in Romania and uh, BMD state in Deveselu? We are very preoccupied, and the Romanian people need a message from you, Secretary General, and from the Romanian President. Thank you. So NATO is a defensive alliance. Uh, NATO is here to preserve peace, and uh, NATO is, uh, uh, has proven for more than 70 years that uh, we defend, uh, we protect, but uh, NATO, uh, of course, remains a defensive alliance. And when it comes to the ballistic missile defense site in uh, in, in Romania, that is also a defensive site. Uh, and uh, it's about uh, uh, addressing um, uh, missile threats from the south. So this is not any kind of offensive systems which are uh, part of uh, the missile defense um, site in Romania. Um, I think there is no doubt that what we see now is that Russia is the aggressor. Russia has actually invaded and taken a part of a neighbor, Ukraine, illegally annexed Crimea. They continue to uh, uh, destabilize eastern Ukraine uh, through the separatists in Donbas. And now they have built up more than 100,000 troops, combat-ready troops, in and around Ukraine. And uh, the uh, buildup continues. So uh, there is no doubt that, in a way, the aggressor, the aggressor we see now is uh, is Russia, and we have to make sure that we provide support to our close um, uh, partner, Ukraine, but at the same time that we prevent any misunderstanding, any miscalculation about NATO's readiness to protect and defend all allies. And by doing that, uh, we are also preventing any attack on any NATO ally country, including, of course, Romania. Russell, I want to be very clear and very explicit. Romania is very well defended and it has all security warranties. No Romanian needs to be afraid, but we have to know where this security of ours is coming from. What are the security warranties? First of all, our armed forces, which have enormously developed during the last year, are very well trained and they are trained for any type of scenario. Moreover, Romania is part of the NATO alliance the strongest military alliance that ever existed throughout history. In order to support us, behold, we have these militaries we have greeted here today at the base of Mikhail Koganichano, and there are others that came from strategic partner states, from our allies, to work together with Romanian military. It is obvious that NATO is a defensive alliance, purely defensive. We do not want to attack anyone. We do not want to invade anyone. But we want to grant security for our states and security for our citizens. This is what we are doing. And if we speak of the uh, Veselu, because this was part of the question, it's a pure defensive installment. It cannot be used to 
attack anyone. This rhetoric we hear from now and then is false. The installment in De Veselu is part of a larger framework of NATO, a defensive framework of defensive missiles. And in this regard, we have nothing to hide. We do not need to hide ourselves from saying it. Once again, Romania is a safe country. President, General Secretary, ladies and gentlemen, the Prince Conference has ended.